A ton of weird stuff is happening in the rec center, a huge invasion event, and a bunch of rec room's player base was just blocked from accessing the game. Hello everybody, I'm Billabob from BVR, and welcome back to Rec Room Roundup, where we go over the latest in rec room news and updates. First up, let's discuss all this weird crap that's been happening in the rec center. The main thing was this new Halloween pop-up shop that showed up in the rec center, and it had some exclusive Halloween items for a few days, like these chainsaws and this recolor of this pumpkin set. The items are cool, but pretty standard Halloween stuff, right? Well, also on Halloween, they introduced this weird glass box in the rec center, surrounded by some stuff, and it seems to do nothing. But, if you are wearing the Amulet of Elsewhere, which was super expensive and on sale a few weeks back, then you can interact with it. If you're wearing the Amulet, you could go around the rec center and click on these things to activate this guy named The Teller inside of the glass box. And he'd just tell you some vague fortune. However, throughout Halloween, his glass box would start to crack. And then if you go up to him after Halloween with the Amulet, whatever this is happens. I guess he explodes. Explodes? I don't know. There's some lore tidbits here with some text from the science department and some guy named H, who I might remind you is different from the guy in Rec Room Lore named S. And apparently on top of those guys, we now have the Teller in Rec Room Lore, and he's connected to the Amulet of Elsewhere somehow, which is also part of it. What the hell? <laughs> guys, can we go back to the days when Rec Room Lore was just the forbidden one, and then every few months codes would pop up in the rec center, and then we'd solve them and feel good about ourselves even though we had no idea what any of it meant? And surprisingly, that's not even the end of the weirdness in the rec center recently. Because recently after Halloween there was another pop-up shop that came up and this one has Easter and spring items? Like, I don't know where the rec room devs are living, but it is about to be winter, guys. <laughs> Why? 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 Anyways, that's about it for all the rec center weirdness. I personally can't wait for next summer where they hopefully release all the Christmas items. I think I'm funny at least. Do you think I'm funny? Subscribe. Bang. Use code BVRR. Bang. Go to my profile, hit the support button, just like that. Okay. Let's talk about this latest update, which was pretty small, but had a few notable changes. First up, there have been some watch UI changes. Most notably, a lot of fonts were changed, and the size of a lot of menus were changed, and there's actually a setting now where you can change the size of the new UI. There's some new sounds now for opening and closing the watch, and there's a new animation for when you click on something, it kind of slides in. In the new UI, the bar at the bottom was changed to be more solid and just have a different layout. However, some people did get access to a new friends menu, which is a pretty big change, and here's how that looks. It pretty much just looks like the old UI friends menu converted to the new UI, which is fine by me, I guess. Rec Room is also starting to roll out support for multiple languages, so you can see here in this tweet from developer Dragon Rat Tiger that they have Japanese enabled. Again, this is something that only a small group of people currently have access to, so I don't have too much footage of it, but I'm sure you can imagine it's just the menus in different languages. And finally, you can now sell custom shirts in the UGC storefront prop in rooms. For the past few weeks, the only way to sell your custom shirts was to get them featured, but now you can sell them in whatever room you want where you have permissions, and and you don't have to get it featured to do so. That's it for this update. Again, not too much, but I think it's mostly because they were busy with events, specifically the invasion event, which we'll talk about right now. The event started in mid-October, and basically these custom power cores started popping up in a bunch of community rooms. You could grab them, and they'd give you XP, and the goal was to find as many power cores as possible across a bunch of custom rooms. In your watch, there was a new menu that showed you which rooms had power cores in them, and how much XP you had got, and it actually showed you a little thing down here for what rewards you'd get for how much XP you had. The more power cores you got, the more more XP you'd get, the more you'd fill up this bar, which would eventually get you more credits. And you could use these credits in this room, the science department, which also opened up with the event. This room basically just explained the event, where to get power cores, how to get them, and where to use them and stuff. It had this little robot guy that explained all this, and some other stuff relating to the lore. But I think by now, we all know how I feel about the lore, so let's just talk about the event for now. In this room, you could use your credits that you got from collecting power cores to buy these special invasion items, and this was kind of the goal of the whole event. I did actually end up completing the event and getting all of these items as you can see here, and it looks super awesome. Yeah, totally worth it. Also in the science department room, there was an easter egg where you could go around picking up little circuits, and if you got all of them, this portal gun would spawn in the center of the room. And it's kinda crazy because this portal gun actually works, and if you look into a portal, you can actually see like what's through the other side, like an actual portal gun. This portal gun was likely made with Rec Room Studio, because this just isn't possible with the in-game tools, and they probably just threw it in here as a little easter egg to get people excited for Rec Room Studio and what it can do. And here's a little bonus, with the portal gun, I tried to create an infinite falling loop like you can in portal, uh, and I accidentally glitched out of the map somehow, so if you want to see that, 
then here it is. This event lasted for two weeks, which means that it's over now, but how was it when it was happening? What's the review? Overall, actually, I'd say this event was really good. It's actually one of the best Rec Rooms ever put on, and I was a big fan. I really like how it involved community rooms instead of just Rec Room Originals. So basically, a bunch of people were being sent to these high-quality, hand-picked community rooms that wouldn't have gone to them otherwise. And I especially like how the event wasn't pay to win. There was this science shovel that you could buy for like 7,000 tokens, which gave you access to a few extra rooms with power cores in them. And then also when you were in a sub room with a power core in it, you would have this like glow around you, but that didn't even work for me half the time anyways. But that's pretty much the only aspect that was pay to win, and it didn't even help that much. Like it speeded up for people who had it, but you could still fully complete the event easily without the sign shovel. The other aspect that you could pay for was to give a four times boost to all the XP you'd collected in the past 15 minutes for like 50 tokens. And that boost was actually super broken. You could literally go in and collect like five power cores in 15 minutes and then use the boost and have the entire event completed. But it was only 50 tokens per day, and most people only had to do it like once or twice, which is so cheap that I don't really even think it's that pay to win. So overall, very cool event. It sent people to good rooms, it made them do fun things, and they got cool outfit items as a reward. What more could you ask for? Next, let's talk about what's probably the biggest news, that a bunch of Rec Room's player base isn't going to be able to play the game anymore. Meta has recently decided that they don't want anyone under 13 on any of their VR headsets, including the Quest 2. So they basically ordered Rec Room to remove junior accounts or under 13 players from the game, or they were going to be delisted from the Quest store. The Quest 2 has Rec Room's largest VR player base, and obviously they don't want to be removed from that store, so they were basically forced to remove Junior accounts on the Quest 2. This means that anyone who is under 13 on a Junior account on a meta device can no longer play Rec Room. Now this sounds pretty bad, but in reality I don't think it's gonna be too huge. Here's the thing, while the Quest 2 is Rec Room's biggest VR audience, there are a ton of other platforms that Rec Room is on on not VR that have bigger player bases. And also, the people who were playing on these Junior accounts have a bunch of other options they can still play Rec Room on. And as a last resort, I'm sure we all know that a bunch of people on Junior accounts are just gonna lie about their age to play on adult accounts and hope they don't get caught. So in the end, Rec Room's probably not gonna lose too many players because this was a relatively small group of people and the group of people who won't continue playing Rec Room in some other way is even smaller. Next up, let's talk about the Haunt Society Room, which was released in Rec Room for Halloween. You might remember that this is a virtual haunted house collaboration between Rec Room and the Haunt Society. And honestly, at first, I thought this was just gonna be really stupid. I didn't even know if I was gonna talk about it. You can tell that this room was made with Rec Room Studio because it has a bunch of custom 3D models around and stuff like these spider webs that aren't possible in current Rec Room. Anyways, yeah, this haunted house is pretty stupid, but it's actually a fake out because eventually you find a secret switch which leads you to whatever this is happening. Again, this is some weird stuff with Rec Room Studio they're doing. And then after that transition, you're thrown into this creepy alien spaceship place out of absolutely nowhere. And honestly, this part is super cool. It has really good audio design. It has a bunch of really cool stuff they did with Rec Room Studio, and it has a bunch of really compelling horror elements in it too. My main complaint is that the room's a little bit short and you just kind of walk down a hallway the whole time, but in the end, I thought this room was actually super cool. The fake out at the start was good, and I would recommend everyone to check it out if they want to see what's going to be possible with Rec Room Studio. Next up, some kind of concerning stuff has been happening with Ink Inc. In case you don't know, Ink Inc. are the ones who control Rec Room's economy, and they recently announced that they are removing the featured inventions and dorm skins programs that they ran for the rest of the year. These programs basically let creators submit their dorm skins and inventions to be featured in the store, so they'd get a bunch more sales, and a lot of people relied on this for their token income. Without having your invention featured, it was kind of hard to get a bunch of sales. So just removing these programs out of absolutely nowhere with nothing to replace them is honestly a little bit concerning. Creators are going to be getting a lot less tokens for this, but I guess we'll just have to wait and see what they hopefully eventually replace them with to get that money back. Next up, this new Book of Elsewhere item has been spotted in some paid bundles in Rec Room. We talked about the Amulet of Elsewhere earlier, you could buy it for 20,000 tokens a few weeks ago, well this is another item in that set. We don't really know what it does yet, but a lot less people are probably going to have this item because you actually have to pay actual money for it. That's the only way to get it through this $5 bundle. In my opinion, if this item ends up being important to interact with stuff like the Amulet of Elsewhere is, then that'll be kind of stupid because the only way to get it is through paying actual money. But we'll just have to wait and see, we don't really have too much information on this book right now. Rec Room gift cards have also started popping up in a bunch of stores, specifically in Texas. You can see a picture of the gift cards right here, and uh, they look kind of stupid. <laughs> but I think that's what they were going for, because they look so different from all the cards around them. People who might not have seen Rec Room before will look and go, hey, what the heck is this? It looks dumb. I don't know, that's my guess for what they were going for. Otherwise, they probably would have gone for a more professional design with like the Rec Room logo and a token box or something. Let me know down in the comments if you've seen any Rec Room gift cards yet at Walmart or Target. Personally, I haven't seen any yet. If you want to check out the last episode where I talk about Rec Room Studio and 
and a bunch of other stuff, then click here. But otherwise, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.